Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us for another segment. You know, our kidneys play a vital role in our overall health by cleaning blood, balancing body fluids, removing waste and aiding in other important functions of our bodies. Now, there is a a rare genetic and progressive disease that affects nearly 140,000 Americans and could lead to kidney failure if left unchecked. Uh, Here with us to talk about this condition is Dr. Neera Dahl. She's a nephrologist. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Dahl. Thank you for having me. Now, I did, of course, mention that you're a nephrologist, a a bit of background uh, about yourself, and then let's talk about this very rare genetic disease of the kidneys. Uh, So I am a nephrologist. I'm at the Yale School of Medicine, and I specialize in people with inherited forms of kidney disease. So the disease we're talking about today is ADPKD, or autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. This is a disease that affects about 1 in 400 to 1 in 1,000 individuals. And people who have this disease generally will know that they're at risk because the disease runs in families. So a mom or dad or grandparent may have the disease. Um, The disease is autosomal dominant, which means each child of an affected parent has about a 50% chance of getting the disease themselves. The disease causes cysts to grow in the kidneys, and these cysts gradually enlarge over over time as the kidneys are getting larger, maybe up to the size of a football. The kidney function starts to decline, and... By the age of 60, about 50% of patients will have developed end-stage kidney disease or kidney failure. And at that point, the patient may require kidney dialysis or kidney transplant for further treatment. Now, being such a a rare disease, how is it diagnosed and how often is it misdiagnosed? You you know, you're talking about uh, by the age of 60 or so. Are we talking going through years of uh, symptoms that seem like other problems? So luckily, this disease can be pretty, pretty readily diagnosed. And the way it's diagnosed is by imaging. So if we are get an ultrasound, a CT, an MRI of the kidneys and see that there are multiple cysts in the kidneys, that the kidneys are um, enlarged, they're both large and they have multiple cysts bilaterally, that makes the diagnosis of PKD, particularly in someone with a family history. And so hopefully if people come to screening early, this is not a diagnosis that's being missed. And we really encourage people to come early to get screened and to get evaluated and to learn about new management strategies. So there, there is a screening process prior to uh, any symptoms if someone knows that they have a, a history of this particular uh, disease in their family, right? That's exactly right. So we can, by imaging, make the diagnosis of the disease before they develop any signs or symptoms of the disease. So traditionally, what is the treatment for this uh, disorder? So traditionally, the treatments have been um, uh, uh, talking about lifestyle choices, about diet choices, about blood pressure control. And now there are new management strategies that we really encourage people to come and talk to their physicians about. When do you encourage a, a person to, to seek treatment? I mean, sometimes uh, symptoms don't necessarily call for a, a doctor's appointment, or sometimes they go away and come back a month later. When do you think it's uh, prudent to see a doctor and talk about your kidney functions? In someone with a family history of PKD, I think if there are signs and symptoms, if they have concerns about whether they have the disease, they should come in and have a conversation with us. Uh, we, can, we, we can evaluate them, see whether the disease is there, talk to them about what their individual risk for progression is, and really give them some good management strategies for how to manage the disease. So I would say any sign or symptom in a patient at risk would be a reason to come in. Um, if there's concern about the disease, even without signs or symptoms, uh, getting the initial screening test is pretty easy. Um, it's non-invasive. It doesn't have any radiation exposure. That's the ultrasound. So we would really come in. We would really encourage people at risk to come in and have that conversation 
and get screened if, if appropriate. Being such a, a rare disease, uh, 140,000 Americans, what would you say to the physicians who may not be aware or as aware as they need to be uh, of such a rare disorder and may be looking at symptoms in another way? So this disease is being diagnosed more than it had been in the past because there's more imaging that happens for other reasons. I would say for a primary care provider, really what's important is if a patient with this medical history, with this family history of the disease, is complaining of back pain or flank pain or has early onset hypertension, it's really important to get that initial imaging test. And once that test is, is confirms the diagnosis, that patient should be referred to a nephrologist. So we can really dive into those different management strategies and help that patient learn more about the disease, learn how to manage the disease. Dr. Dahl, where can our listeners go and get some more information about this condition and about kidney functions uh, overall and uh, some of these lifestyle changes that uh, you suggest need to uh, be implemented when someone is diagnosed with this um, ADPKD? So one site I really like is pkdinfo.com. This has a lot of great general information on how to talk to healthcare professionals about PKD, how to get initial information. There's information about caregivers on this website as well. And there's also great links to other sources of information on PKD and on kidney disease in general. Well, I thank you so much for taking the time with us this morning, Dr. Neera Dahl. Thanks for having me, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.